Hey guys, it's Biggs. Welcome back. Now, if you're like me and you got several aquariums or lots of aquariums or your aquarium hobby is completely out of control, there's often things that we overlook. You know, we have so much things going on and we often think we're better. We just know what's happening in that environment, but honestly, we probably don't. Well, recently I was at my good friend's, the big wholesaler in town here, and uh, he just recently brought in a new line of products from Germany. And in that, uh, that offering that he brought in, he had one really unique thing. And I said, oh, I totally want one of those. I, I just want to see that. So it's the first time it's ever been in Canada, to the best of my knowledge. So let's take a peek at it. like I might have many aquariums. You might have one aquarium, you might have hundreds of aquariums, it doesn't matter. Honestly, it doesn't matter. This topic will apply to absolutely each and every one of you. Whether you've kept fish for six months or a year, or you are a veteran and you've kept tanks your entire life, this will still apply. Now, one thing that we are ultimately, we can all agree on is that all of us as aquarists are 100% inherently responsible for the lives of the fish and the inv inhabitants of that aquarium, be it fish, plants, whatever, invertebrates. It's our role and responsibility to make sure that they got the best of the best. Now, one thing that's often overlooked, we often talk about it at the beginning as new hobbyists or we'll take it to a store and they will help us out with it, but a lot of people don't necessarily buy them. And that's talking about the aspect of test kits. They come in many shapes and forms, but there's two real tried and true ones that are available to most general hobbyists. They come in the form of the little test strips, which a lot of people love. I, for one, absolutely love them. Some people talk about that when, they're, when the bottle is finally opened and uh, the test, test strips are exposed to oxygen that they start to degrade a little bit and the test aren't as accurate. Honestly, for my purposes, having lots and lots of tanks, I'm not looking at the test strip first. I'm gonna be watching my fish first. So here we got, this is one of the two tanks I have running right now, because you guys know we're in the whole process of gutting and resetting up that room. It's coming along, but when you got big tanks, it takes a little bit longer. But this is about a 75 gallon aquarium. It's been set up in my kind of family room area, and the whole area behind it's an absolute disaster of all the equipment and apparatus and everything that goes into the fish room. But this tank has been set up healthy and happy, running for a long period of time and I just moved it basically. All the extra plant life that's in here, it looks, it looks over full, and honestly it is because it's all the plants out of all the other tanks that have been torn down. This tank gives me zero issues. Once a week I do about a 30% water change, which is kind of standard for most people, 25, 30, 40% water change, depending on the fish load or biological load on the aquarium, and this tank is filtered by a large canister filter, a large Eheim Classic. And I have no issues with the tank whatsoever. So. I treat water quality, but one thing that we don't know is I can only be as good as the water quality in there. And for actually, if I can guess what the chemistry of that water is, that's about the best I could do. And that's the best about the best about most, well, most of us can do. We could say my municipal water comes out of the tap at X pH and X hardness and X so-and-so, but I use well water or reverse osmosis water. And in this case, I'm using strictly reverse osmosis water and then I buffer it to where I want it to be. But with the addition of fish or life, they're going to produce waste products, and those products will start to degrade the water quality. The addition of things like driftwood, bogwoods, and those type of things will also change the alter of the chemistry of the water as well. So to really be truly accurate and know exactly what we're dealing with before there's a potential problem that may emerge is one thing it's really advisable to do is to test our water. So as we mentioned, there's the little test strips, and then there's all sorts of different types of test kits available out there that come in different types of forms. Both of these are ones that are readily available to most hobbyists globally. And these are the ones that you take some water into a little tiny vial. Uh, you take some vial, you add whatever agents are re required for depending on what you want to test for. And then you're gonna go and compare those things to different types of color charts. Now the real key when you're testing your water using these things, these are not lab grade products. These are not designed to give you absolute pinpoint of a hundredth degree of what we're dealing with here. We don't need that for most points in our aquarium. For honestly though, any average fish, uh, freshwater aquarium or even saltwater aquarium, these basic test kits are honestly all you're ever gonna need. Now, on the subject of that, I mentioned that I was at my uh, local fish wholesaler and he brought in a new product line from Germany. But one of the products I had has no electronics whatsoever and it is this product here. 
It is from a company, it's one of the biggest companies for aquatics in Germany called JBL. And this is the Pro JBL Scan. And it is a water analysis kit for your smartphone. So you go to there and you download the app. You download the app onto your phone. And let's get my phone and I'll show you how it works. Hey, time for a little announcement. If you guys are liking what we're putting out here, consider hitting that subscribe button, ring that little notification bell. I know it's not always about aquariums. That is my main passion. Sometimes it's about some creepy crawly stuff that you may not think is the coolest. Maybe I do, maybe you don't. But bear in mind, there's always gonna be all sorts of cool aquarium related content coming up, coming down the path. So please support me. I love you guys. Thank you very much for always being here. Let's get back to the video. I've already taken the liberty of downloading the app. And this is it here. Now, when you first open the app, you have a couple of options. The first option is My Analysis. And what the My Analysis does is it scans, saves, and compares. If you were to say once a month, test this aquarium, you could tabulate your results and maintain it. And you could watch a trend and see how things go. Because when it comes down to water quality, honestly, fish in the wild, unless they come from really like a cesspool or a blackwater swamp with no water circulation, they do not deal with all the buildups that fish in an aquarium would. And what do we do as an aquarist? Well, once a week, once a month, we go and do a partial water change. That is drastic in regards to biochemistry or water chemistry. Very, very drastic. When I installed those automatic water changing systems on a lot of the different filters and a lot of different aquariums in this room as well as in other rooms prior, is what that does is it does on a daily basis smaller, more diminutive, diluted water changes on the environments and it makes it much more natural. And that is a, a large a point in my favor. I think that is the reason I've been so successful with breeding a lot of different, maybe more challenging species of fish, is that the water parameters I can make and maintain a lot more steadier than if I were just doing, you know, the standard 25, 35, 50% water change once a week. Because every the minute you set up this aquarium and everything's brand new and it's all clean and sterile and you inoculate it and then you get it cycled and then you add some life to it. And once that life is in there, every single time that a perk on a fish moves, it's producing a waste product. Every little leaf that may fall off from damage or, or, or die, that is a waste product. Every little piece of fish food or poop, those are a waste product. And we are expecting this system, be it the biological systems of the filtration, to break those products down. It'll never happen fully. This is not nature in a glass box. We have a massive role in maintaining that water chemistry. And that's where we do our water changes. So the smaller, more frequent water changes will always be better than one large whole scale water change. Let's get back to this. Now this thing here, I think is really, really cool. So I've downloaded the app. You've got two options, as I said. You've got the one where it controls and, 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 and downloads all that stuff for you and maintains it. Or you have the option of just a quick scan. Now. As I look at the two things that came here, so in, the tw in here we have 24 ProScan water analysis strips for use with the JBL ProScan set. Water analysis strips are sensitive to humidity, very true. There is a drying agent that is contained in here and it's all hermetically sealed. Uh, remove only the quantity required at the time and close the container immediately after use and store in a cool and dry place. Pretty standard stuff. Now, this thing isn't expensive. The whole kit itself I think was around 40 bucks, 30, 40 bucks. I don't quote me exactly, but I think it's only about 30, 40 bucks. And then uh, to buy just the replacement strip, it's even street cheaper still. It is available at one place in Canada uh, where you can buy it as a hobbyist direct retail, and that's Aficionados uh, just outside in Manitoba, just outside of Winnipeg in Manitoba, Canada, and that's www.cycloholic.com. That individual, Spencer Jack, sells fish products all across Canada. So you could go to your local store and say, hey, aficionados in Winnipeg is carrying these JBL products and Biggs told me about this really, really cool JBL water test scan thing. You can get your pet store to bring that in for you from him direct. So it says here that uh, when you open the app, and as I showed you, when you open the app, it's gonna show you that you have a couple of different options. You have aquarium freshwater, garden pond, or just water. Now, if you use the aquarium freshwater or the water one, the app will actually calculate the current available CO2 content in the water, resulting in the measured pH and KH values, just as an additional bonus. Depending on the analysis result of aquarium fish or water or in garden ponds, you'll receive individualized recommendations about JBL products. Yeah, 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 I know. You want to sell me more stuff? That's okay. But it'll tell you basic things that if your ammonia is high, it'll tell you what products will break down your ammonia. And you as an aquarist will also have access to either these products or other products that could maybe do the exact same job. But bottom line is the results are going to be the most important aspect. 
Scan the analysis strips with the color card on a matte surface in bright daylight or artificial light. Now that thing is really, really critical. It doesn't matter which brand you're using. Is You should be using them in a nice natural light. Most aquarium lights are going to have the different color renditions. It's going to change. It's going to be a purple color. It might color the, color the appearance. So I often take these up into a nice bright room that's not direct sunlight. And I'll usually do them on my kitchen table. So let's get testing. All right, back to the app. So we're going to use aquarium, I believe, because... It's an aquarium, right? So we're going to do that. When we hit the aquarium one, the thing is, before we start it, it says that you're going to take, before you start the start button, you immerse the strip in the water for two to three seconds and then shake off the remaining water and then we wait for the app to tell us when to do the comparison chart. So we're going to go and do that now for you. I'm going to put the phone down. We're going to put the strip in the water here. And then as soon as I pull the strip out, we're going to stop, and then I'm going to run upstairs and put everything on the table so we can do it in a nice, even light. So we got our one strip. We're pretty much good to go. There's a whole bunch of different uh, little, uh, I don't know what you call them, cells or whatnot on the thing, but they're all good to go. because It's going to test for a whole pile of stuff. Okay. We're ready. Press start. Put the thing in the water. One, two, three, we pull it out, we shake off the excess, and as you can see, we got like 40 seconds. So let's stop, let's head upstairs. All right, looks like we're good to go here. We're still doing our countdown right now. We're sitting at about 20 more seconds. And about 20 seconds, uh, 15. It'll give us an opportunity to go and have a, a peek. But this thing, you can, as you can tell, it doesn't look like much on here, but it's gonna tell us absolutely everything, water parameters that we're gonna need to know about. Tell us everything that we're gonna wanna do to maintain a good, healthy environment for our fish. All right, now it wants the camera accessible. I bring the camera over top. And there's our analysis. Now here is our overview. You can see nitrates, nitrate no problem, nitrate no problem, total hardness, it's fairly soft, three degrees, which is ideal for what I'm keeping. I could actually be buffered up a little bit higher for general hardness. Carbonate hardness being at zero, that's ideal for the fish that I'm keeping. pH value of seven, now that gives me two things. That tells me one, that my RO unit is working really, really well because the reverse osmosis should always be around seven. I have zero chlorine. I didn't know that's something I needed to test, but I also have very, very low levels of carbon dioxide. Now that's fine because the reason I have low levels of carbon dioxide is that the spray bar from that large Ehan canister filter disperses a lot of that CO2 that may be in the water. And this chlorine at this point only has very low light and low CO2 requiring plants such as Anubias and Java ferns and different things like that. So right now it's not really an issue whatsoever. Everything's doing great. Let's see where this details takes us. Details, okay. My nitrate in the community query, it might be a bit too low. I don't know about G, that being too low. So it's actually got things that it wants me to add to it. Everything is all right. Taller hardness, value is too low. That's easy to bring up by, uh, by me adding a bit more uh, of the mineral content that I have that I use when I make my R, when I do my water changes. But for an average aquarium, for a beginning aquarist, this is incredible information. Not only does it give you the, the products that it's recommending, but if you don't have access to say some of these products, you could click on this and it would take you to the product and then give you the breakdown of what's in that product of what makes that work. And then you could go to your store, wherever you are, and find something that would be the equivalent to it. Because JBL products may not be available really readily anywhere in North America yet. Everything is all right. No chlorine. Well, I don't have chlorine here anyways uh, because I use well water and then well water goes through my RO system. So there's obviously not going to be any chlorine present anyways. And then CO2 value may be too low and it's exactly like we talked about. Plants require CO2, but not necessarily the plants they have. And it's telling me to add a CO2 system. So all in all, I think this is super cool. So overall, I'm pretty impressed. I think for the price of this thing, and honestly, it's, it's under $40, and I looked it up from my buddy, and then the replacement strips are under 30 
So just, you know, to get, you know, to get started for 40 bucks, it's what you're going to pay for a good quality test kit anyways. I know some people may not like the idea of the paper strips, but uh, this is coming from Germany. I think these guys have got it figured out. It's pretty slick. That little color chart thing that we used, the way that this thing works doesn't show anything like this. But the phones and the lighting and everything, the way that these things are all designed is they can pick up spectrums that we can't see with the naked eye. That's always been a problem I find with these paper strips is they give you these color charts and like, you look at them, you're like, okay, where am I? I'm kind of between these three colors. And that could be a very, very large degree of variance. So overall, I'm very, very impressed with this. So if you guys want to get one yourself, it's called the JBL ProScan. As I say, it's under 40 bucks. It's available in Canada. I don't know if it's available in the States. I apologize. I'm sure it is. But it's available in Canada exclusively through the aficionados just outside of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And uh, as I mentioned, the link will be in the description if you want to try and find out about one. And it'll be available at any one of your pet stores right across Canada if you so wish. So as always, my friends, thank you kindly. Take care of your fish. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. And we'll see you next time. Take care.